Welcome back to John's Films, your home for tech videos you can't find anywhere else. Today, I'm talking to you about double network address translation and why you need to be aware of it when you set your prosumer or enterprise grade network up at your house. So double NAT, it's not just some fancy coffee drink. It's not. Instead, it's the translation of an external IP address, public facing IP address to an internal IP address like 192.168.something. In fact, this came about because there's really only 4.3 billion IP addresses in the IPv4 spec, which is the network address protocol most people run. And if that's the case, then that means there could only be 4.3 or so billion Wi-Fi mice around, or cell phones. Seems like a problem. And so what they realized was if we could set aside some space inside the IPv4 spec, we'd have a little bit of room that people could have their own private network and not eat up all of the internet IP addresses if they don't have to. In fact, we could even do it so that maybe all of their devices, like all the computers in an office, could go through like maybe say one gateway and that gateway would only have one or a couple IP addresses that it would use. Hey, that seems like a brilliant idea. And that exactly is network address translation. But what if you wanted to set up, say, a unified Dream Machine Pro or an ingenious network router? What would you do? If it's going to be your gateway and it does network address translation, but you also have to have a modem from your internet service provider, does it also have network address translation? And the answer is most likely yes. In fact, I've seen a very common challenge on the internet, the AT&T Uverse service with gigabit internet. Fantastic fiber to your house, really fast speeds, and they hand you a Nokia BGW320, in my case, dash 505, modem, router, switch, hub, all in one. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is, you've got network address translation that happens inside that AT&T device. I really only need a modem, but I end up with a modem and a router and network address translation and a DHCP server I don't really want. Now there's some drawbacks to having double network address translation on your network. For one, there's a little bit of latency there. It's minute, but it's an extra step you don't need. Two, some download protocols, some games, some chat protocols have difficulty negotiating the double network hop as it goes from private network to private network to public network. And you can actually run into some problems where you aren't able to connect and you will tear your hair out with some auto update feature wondering why won't it update when it's a problem in the network outside of your computer. So what do I do about that? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to manage the settings. And even if they're not applicable because you have a different router, you'll find very similar settings in most likely any ISP router that's given to you. And you'd be able to apply them to your network. Here we are on the home network on the Nokia BGW320. This is just a standard all-in-one modem router setup. I'm going to want to turn off a few pieces of it. And so I'm going to go to firewall. And in this case, what that does is give me access to a few different settings, packet filters, the actual firewall, port forwarding, and one I'm really interested in called IP pass through. In this case, I'm going to tell the AT&T box, do as little as possible. In fact, I want you to use allocation mode pass through. Pass through means send all traffic directly down to another machine I'm going to point you at. I can do this down here through a couple of different options. I chose DHCP fixed. What this does is allow me to draw a DHCP public internet address and assign it to a device on my network. In this case, I'm going to assign it to my unified Dream Machine Pro. Once I've got that done, I'm now going to be able to see in my unified portal that I have a public facing IP address that I got from AT&T. I've blurred mine out, but it should show right here in the new dashboard. I'm currently running Unified Controller 6.1.61 for those of you on the Dream Machine Pro. There are a couple things you need to be aware of though. When we did the pass-through, we sent all traffic from the internet directly at this Unified device. So you wanna make sure it's actually worthy of that. You wanna make sure it's got a firewall that can handle it. And you wanna make sure that you've got some form of security wrapped around it so that you know if there's a problem. 
In this case, I've gone into my settings on my Dream Machine Pro, security, and now used internet threat management to turn on packet inspection. Here, it allows me to either detect problems based on the packet origin, the type of packet, or the protocol that's being used, or to block it based on that criteria as well. And this is pretty in depth. You can go into a whole lot of stuff. But my note to you is when you route all your traffic from your internet provided router modem combo into a dedicated device, you need to make sure that you maintain and keep the security in place. The second thing I did is to ensure that I've got my firewall turned on and that it's active and set up for the way I want it set up. I'll have a future video on this, so make sure you hit subscribe. You let me know if you've run into network address translation problems before, what you did to solve it, and I don't know if you've got any other suggestions down in the comments. Thanks for watching. Hit that thumbs up button. It makes my day when I see a whole bunch of people really appreciated the video enough to one, watch to the end, and two, hit the thumbs up. Thanks for watching and have a great day.